Here we are back again for another part in the MVVM Jetpack Compose course for beginners. And in this part, we're going to continue with our development of recipe fragments. And just to remind you of what we did in the previous video, let's go take a look. So in the previous video, we worked on being able to click on a recipe and navigate to recipe fragment. Notice up here, it tells me the ID of the recipe that I clicked. So if I go back, click on another one, it says loading and it tells me what recipe I selected. So what we're going to do in this video is work on recipe fragment. We're going to build the view model, build the state events, and also just kind of get it... Um, we're gonna move really quickly. I'm gonna get the whole kind of view model built. That's basically the goal of the video. Lucky for us, recipe fragment is quite a bit simpler than recipe list fragment. There's only one state event and uh, there's not a lot to go in the view model. So right click on recipe, go to new Kotlin file and call this recipe event. Now this will be very similar to the other event class that we built. It's gonna be a Kotlin sealed class called recipe event. There's gonna be a single event, but here this gets a little different than what we did before. We're gonna use a data class, call it get recipe event, open this up, have an ID parameter passed as an argument, and still we're going to return the recipe event. So this is a little different. Before we were using an object in the other event class that we built, but here, here you can see it's giving me a warning. I cannot pass uh, objects to the constructor of a, of an or I can't yeah I can't pass things I can't pass arguments to something declared as an object there that's how you say it so instead we can use data class so this is just uh, you know the same as before just has an argument instead of you know no arguments for those of you who are new with Kotlin which I suspect some of you are you might be wondering what this data identifier is this is just a convention I don't think it actually gives you anything extra other than just it's simply identifying that this is a data holder class. It's just a convention. You know, this does exactly the same thing. If I didn't have data in front of it, literally exactly the same thing. It's just a Kotlin sort of convention that you mark any sort of a class that is meant to hold data, you mark it as a data class. I could be wrong about that. There might be something special that this does, but I, I don't think so. All right, now let's build this view model. Let's go into the recipe package, right click and call this recipe view model. Now minimize this and so I can give you guys lots of room. Now this will be very similar to our other view model. So class recipe view model, I will use the view model inject annotation because we are going to be using hilt to inject dependencies into this constructor. So there's our constructor. Now we need a couple uh, arguments. We need the recipe repository. We need the, um, we need the token. So private at named, whoops, at named. And then we want to specify the auth underscore token. If you're wondering about this stuff and it looks you know, a little confusing to you, just refer back to when we did the Hilt setup stuff and uh, kind of refresh your memory. I'm not gonna go over it again because it was already covered in this course. Now I want to also inject the saved state handle. So using that assisted annotation that I talked about when we worked with the saved state handle a couple of videos ago. Again, if you're unclear, Go back, check out those videos because I explain them in much more detail. I'm going to move quickly through this because we've already built one view model and the, you know pretty much everything that I'm going to show you in this video, we've already gone through. So I want to extend the view model class. So extend that uh, and then open this up. Now the things that we're going to be keeping track of in this view model, the first one is the recipe that was selected. So this will be a mutable state of type recipe and set that equal to mutable, whoops, mutable, uh, state of, and this will be null by default. Now we also need to add a, a nullable question mark to that object if we're passing null here. Now the other thing that we're keeping track of is whether we are loading or not. So private value loading and just set that equal to, oh actually this can't be private because we are, both of these can't be private because we are going to be looking at those in the fragment. So delete that private identifier and then just say mutable mute able state of and this boolean will be false by default now for the init function so come in here write init inside of init we really only have to worry about one thing and that's for restoring when the process dies so restore if the process dies and again we've already talked about process death there's an individual video completely on that so i'm not going to really explain this anymore this will be integer type and this will be the state key, which I forgot to define above, state key recipe. And again, I'm not gonna be talking too much more about this because we have an individual video specifically for process death. So if you want more information on that, just go back and rewatch that video. Now inside here, I'm gonna call a function on trigger event, which we haven't built yet, and call it get recipe or call get recipe event. Open this up and pass that recipe ID as input. Whoops, this argument should be recipe ID. And I can get the static import just to kind of clean this up. 
So a couple of things we need, first of all, is the state key recipe. So come up to the top here, do constant value state key recipe. Now, as a convention, you know, some people like to use the package structure for this, like for keys, like they would do a string, do com coding with Mitch, MVVM recipe app, presentation, UI recipe, and then just do dot like, I don't know, recipe ID or something. Um, we don't really need that. You can just do, you can do whatever, like you can do state.key.recipe. Uh, you know, whatever you want. The, the point is that it's just unique. So make sure that it's unique. I should probably do recipe ID since that's the thing that we are saving. So state key recipe, doesn't matter as long as it's unique. That's the important thing. Now let's build this on trigger event function. So again, very similar to what we did in the other view model. I'll do a function on trigger event. It will take an event. This one will be the recipe event though, not the um, recipe list event, because that was for the other one. Now do view model scope dot launch. And now we want to do a when statement inside of here, but we want to surround that when statement in a try catch in case we get any kind of exception. Uh, now we aren't doing any kind of uh, error handling really. We're not, you know, we don't have uh, Crashlytics installed or any other sort of tool for logging these errors to some kind of console. So I'm just going to log them to the log. So just do, you know, uh, we'll say exception. Let's do say exception and then do E and then maybe do comma uh, E dot cause. So at least then we can look in the log and see what's wrong. I generally speaking, like if we're talking about production, what I always recommend doing is using Firebase Crashlytics. Firebase Crashlytics is completely free. And anytime there is, um, you know, a crash, it will get logged to your Crashlytics. And as the developer, it makes it really easy for debugging that way. Now inside here, I want to do when event, open this up, is the get recipe event, which is the only event that we have. But even though we have one, it's still generally a good idea to use a when statement because you might add more later on, later in development, who knows. Now do recipe.value equals null. So if it equals null, then I want to call function get recipe, which we haven't built yet, and then pass that recipe ID. So as you probably guessed, this function is going to be the one that hit, uh, you know queries the API and gets the recipe using that recipe ID. So now scroll down and we'll build that last function. So private function, uh, private suspend function, suspend function uh, get recipe. It'll take the ID as input, which will be an integer. Now loading dot value, set that equal to true. Now I want to simulate a network delay because otherwise the API is just too fast and you don't see any kind of a loading delay. So simulate a delay to show loading. We'll just do delay and do, you know, a thousand milliseconds or one second in other words. And now we want to get the recipe from the API. So value recipe equals recipe repository dot get pass the token for the token and then pass the ID or the recipe ID for that ID. And now when I get that, just do recipe or this dot recipe dot value equals the recipe that we retrieved from the API. And now the last thing is update our saved state handle. So say state dot set, we can do state key. So state key recipe, pass that recipe ID. And as a last step, loading dot value equals false because we are all done. So just to kind of remind you guys, because I know it's been a while since we looked at our repository and we built that, if we click on the get function, this is the definition right here. I actually want to go to the implementation though. So let's go into repository, go into recipe repository implementation. Uh, that doesn't really tell us much either. So let's go to, uh, let's go to network, go into retrofit service. This is where we got a little bit more information. So remember, we have two functions for our API. We have a search function here and we have a get function. So the get function we use to search a specific recipe, whereas the search function we use to search for, you know, a bunch of recipes. So the one, the one that we just used in recipe view model is the one for getting a specific recipe. So we get the ID, we use that ID to then get the, you know, get the ingredients, get everything else that the recipe has. Okay, now the last thing we want to do is go into recipe fragment. So kind of, I'm just going to kind of clean this stuff up a little here, go into recipe fragment and let's update this. So let's get rid of everything that we had previously, get rid of the recipe ID. Uh, we'll come back and we'll fix that stuff up later. So at the top we want to, oh, we need to add view model inject or Android entry point first of all. So add Android entry point. That way we can instantiate our view model like this using, uh, using Hilt. So recipe view model by view models and initialize that. So same kind of thing we did in recipe list fragments, literally exactly the same other than this is a different view model. Now instead of on create, do arguments uh, dot 
uh, get integer just like we were doing before. I shouldn't have actually deleted that. I should have just like got rid of some of it, but that's okay. I'll just rewrite it again. Say recipe ID, open this up. Now, instead of, you know, just setting a global value like we were doing before, I want to call on trigger event called get recipe event open this up and then pass the recipe ID. And I can get the static import for this just to kind of clean this up. So as soon as you get the recipe ID when the fragment is created, it's gonna call on trigger event in the view model and get the rest of the information from the API. Now come on down to our composable and we need a couple of variables up at the top. So value loading equals view model dot loading dot value. And then we need the recipe. So value recipe equals ViewModel.Recipe.Value, same kind of stuff we've been doing throughout the course for getting, uh, I guess, mutable state objects from the view model and observing them in the composable. Now come down here and let's change this logic. So let's say, uh, well, let me just delete this because this looks bad. So let's say, let's set the text equal to recipe, recipe, whoops, if I could type recipe, let. So if the recipe is not null, then I want to say selected recipe ID, whoops, recipe ID, and just do recipe, I need to do uh, recipe dot ID. And I wish that this was, I wish compose did not do this. I don't know. Oh, see there, it, it cleans it up. I don't understand. It like had that huge space there before. And then magically it doesn't now. I don't know why it does that. So if it is not null, we're gonna see selected recipe ID, but if it is null, then I'll do question mark colon. I will say loading dot dot dot, the exact same thing as we were doing before. So now this is gonna look uh, pretty much the same, I guess. We have um, you know our recipe ID and then it's gonna show our recipe ID, but the backend sort of infrastructure is totally different. Now we have, we have this event class, we have our view model all built, and it actually is getting the recipe from the from the API, we're still only showing the recipe ID, but we could show something else just to make sure that we actually got it. I'll say, you know, we got the selected recipe and then print out the title. All right, so let's run this and we'll take a look. All right, there's the app launching. Now let's uh, select any recipe, doesn't matter. I've been going a lot with the pulled pork lately, but let's scroll down and let's grab this, uh, let's grab this easy ice cream cake. So if I click on this, we get loading and then boom, there we go, selected recipe. <laughs> it says ID, but it's actually the title. But anyway, easy ice cream cake is the title. So we know that that worked. Let's go back. Let's click on another one. So we have chocolate chip cookie dough sandwiches. Let's click on this one and we get the title chocolate chip cookie dough sandwiches. So we know that everything is working correctly. We're passing the ID to the next fragment. It's then using that ID to query the API and get that recipe information. Now in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the UI in recipe fragment. So what do I mean by working on the UI? Well, here's the completed version of the app. You can see that if I click on a recipe, it's, uh, you know, we still have that shimmer loading animation. Let me go back so you can see that again. We have the shimmer, we have the shimmer down here, we have a progress bar, and then it loads all of the details for that particular recipe. Also, this is scrollable. So if the ingredients get too long, then you just scroll down and you can see them. So we're gonna work on that in the next video, building out the UI. Uh, we won't be building the shimmer animation yet, but that will be in the video after that one. Where do you think you're going? Don't go to the next video yet. Don't go before you leave some engagement. Get down there, make sure to leave, write something, write anything, tell me about your day. Tell me about the bugs that you've been working on. Tell me about this problem at work that's been driving you crazy. Tell me about how my courses are the best. That always, that's always a good one to put down there. And of course, leave a like. Turn that gray thumbs up into a blue thumbs up. And I will see you guys in that next video for the UI. Hey, what are you still doing here? The video is over. Well, since you're still here, I guess I'll show you the best Android courses that exist on the planet. I got all kinds of high quality courses. If you scroll on down on the homepage, there's the Jetpack Compose one that you're watching right now. There's that course. We have MVI architecture. If you've ever been curious about that, we have my classic powerful Android apps with Jetpack architecture. This shows you everything from, uh, well, the focus on this one is pretty much database caching. Caching. We get data from a real API, we cache it, we uh, basically design an app to work when there's no network connection. That is what this project is all about. We have some UI testing, another UI testing, Hilt, which uh, we actually went over in this course. We got clean architecture. This one's probably the best, this is definitely the best course on my website. If you are a professional or you are looking to get into the industry, the skills that you learn in this course are absolutely fundamental. This will give you a big edge 
in any job environment, whether you're applying or you're already at a job and you want to just improve your skills, this is a really, really, really high quality course. It's hard. Your, your brain might explode while watching it, but you will learn a lot. You'll learn a lot of really, really fundamental skills. You know, anything from getting data from the network, caching data, designing different layers, abstracting out the different layers so that you can write unit tests, uh, espresso tests, so UI tests, dagger, navigation components, everything. It's beautiful. Definitely this is the best course on the website.